So welcome everyone to another episode of The Creative Minds. Joining me here today is Chelsea Hain. So Chelsea, can you tell us a bit more about who you are and what is it that you do? Yes, Ada, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm super grateful and honored. Mm-hmm. I am an intuitive gut health coach. So what does that mean? I, uh, I'm a certified health and life coach. I have a degree in psychology, so I have a strong psychology background. And I use all these, school, these tools to help women heal from the inside out, specifically focusing on the gut, literally mm-hmm. our digestive tract. <laughs> and... Um, letting that healing really emanate outwards. So the gut really does affect everything from mental well-being to our immune health, to the condition of our skin. And uh, the secondary layer to what I do is really allowing ourselves to trust our intuition. So I always say, you know, it's, it'll be hard to whisper to the It'll be hard to listen to the whispers of our soul if we're in pain every single day. So mm-hmm. once we can start to get over that physical pain, we really start to be able to listen to our subtle desires and whispers of our soul, taking mm-hmm. trusting your gut to a whole new level. Yeah, that's amazing. And you said um, you work uh, or understand how how to possibly affect the gut. What do you what do you mean by the gut? What is it that you do? Is there a certain mm-hmm. medication that you subscribe, or how do you do that? How do you work with that? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. So I actually do not focus on healing through supplements and outside resources. Mm -hmm. So I have a one-on-one program where we work through my four main pillars. So pillar Mm -hmm. one is assessing. So uh, I'd like to imagine the gut like a flourishing garden or a rainforest, right? This, our gut is full of microbiome. uh, Our microbiome is full of bacteria and yeast and parasites, some good, some bad, you know, it's a live living organism, the way you would imagine some other ecosystem in the world, like a coral reef or a rainforest, Mm -hmm. right? And what happens is if that rainforest or if that coral reef is out of balance, it messes everything up. You can imagine in a coral reef, for example, if you kill off one certain food source, the, f- the animals that eat that food source are also going to die off. It's really yeah. detrimental, right? Yeah. So it's a similar mindset to our gut. So pillar one in my program is really just taking an assessment of the land. So what we do is we do a GI map test. It's one of the best on the market. I've partnered up with a naturopathic doctor to help me um, order this test. It can't, be, it can't be ordered just off the street. There mm-hmm. are GI map tests that we as the consumers could order online Mm. and take uh, ourselves at home. Unfortunately, that information doesn't always equal transformation though, right? That information can be a bit overwhelming. So that's where the doctor helps us digest that information. And of course, all puns intended. And she creates a healing, a specific unique healing protocol for what's actually happening in our gut. So if there are parasites or if there are if there's overgrowth or SIBO or dysbiosis in some way that's when we would then move forward with that healing protocol Mm -hmm. one of the best things about this assessment is that oftentimes we realize that actually there's nothing actually physically wrong with the gut yeah so this is really also um, an amazing opportunity so we really have to just take an assessment of the land I like to say right we gotta we gotta look at what's going on we gotta make a plan for our garden what we want it to look like Mm -hmm. and we have to be super crystal clear about that and then we have to see like what's the quality of the soil what are what's growing there you know and what's not flourishing yeah Then we take a a step forward into my second pillar, which is reset. So assess reset. Uh And during this reset, this is where we essentially pull the weeds out, right? This is where we eliminate inflammatory foods. I have a healing protocol for two weeks that we, Mm -hmm. that we go through. Uh, I I land in the foundation that the body can and does heal if given the chance. Mm -hmm. And we just live this go, go, go stressful lifestyle lifestyle where we don't provide many chances or opportunities for our, our body to do what it does best. Because remember, Ida, the body knows how to heal, right? If you get a cut, it scabs over and disappears within a couple of days. The body is rejuvenating. It, it, if you actually cut off the top portion of your lung, it will actually grow back. Same with your liver. So we are actually regenerative beings. Mm-hmm. But if we don't have the proper environment, right, we are very susceptible to the environment that we are living in. We never really have the opportunity 
to maximize our healing. So that's what this hitting reset is all about. It's about, again, churning the soil, pulling out the weeds and assessing how we relate to ourselves and the world around us in specifically in how we relate to stress, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hitting the reset button. Okay. So that then we, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, then there's just two more pillars. So the mm -hmm. third pillar is nourish. And I think this is where most people yeah. get confused on yeah. a healing journey. So this is where 97% of women who go on diets fall off the bandwagon, quote unquote. Yeah. This is where we have a tendency to yo-yo diet or lose weight and gain weight or where we get stuck in that yeah. uh, confused mindset of, I need to be doing more for my health. And what yeah. do I even do? It's all really confusing. Yeah. So this, this third pillar of my program is really, um, it's really important to creating this lifestyle where we're no longer falling off the bandwagon because we're never getting on it. We're never yeah. on the diet train. Yeah. We're really, we're, we're doing this from a very methodical, and it's important to note healing is never linear. But there is a certain pathway that you can take in order to logically move from pain to pleasure, from dysbiosis to balance, right? From scarcity to abundance. And, mm -hmm. and of course, it's very mind, body, soul connected. Yeah. So this is what I call nourish. Pillar three is all about nourishing. So assess, reset, and nourish. And this is where we re-inoculate re the gut. So we've turned the soil. We've pulled out the weeds. Now we have to nourish it. We have to fertilize that soil. We have to yeah. plant the seeds. Yeah. Because remember, if we are just living in this life of elimination, so for anyone who has ever experienced an el uh, elimination diet, or maybe they are trying to remove inflammatory foods or living in this either or mindset, it can really lead us down this path of deprivation. And deprivation is not sustainable because yeah. remember our subconscious brain, Ida, is always trying to seek pleasure and avoid pain. Yeah. And what sounds more painful and less pleasurable than avoiding everything that we love in life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eventually we're going to again, fall off that bandwagon. And I, I keep doing air quotes if you're listening to an audio version of this because that, that is so ingrained in our minds. So this third pillar is, is, again, this is sort of the let's, we create a naughty and nourishment menu. Mm -hmm. Let's look at how we can nourish mm -hmm. not only physically our gut with nutrient dense foods, because there's also a time and place for nourishment, entertainment and fun. So, mm -hmm. you know, how can we look at how we relate again to stress and enjoying that piece of cake without going to work the next day and saying, oh, I was really bad last night. I yeah. ate dessert. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, you're not morally, uh, you know, uh, a sinner because you ate cake last night. If you want to be bad, like, let's yeah. go break, break routine. Let's go mm -hmm. act naughty. Let's go do something crazy. Like, let's yeah. go be naughty. Yeah. But, you know, what, what you eat uh, is, is not a direct reflection of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I think like you mentioned here, exactly. It's, um, it's just we perceive that we are bad or that we failed. And then we start re-emphasizing this by the words that we tell ourselves. So now it's not only in your mind, now you're saying it and now you're hearing it. And that's just a negative cycle. And then you're hurt and you want to eat more because you already messed up. So like, I think this is like the worst thing you could really do. Yeah, 100%. Yes, exactly. You start and then all of a sudden it's, oh, well, I've already eaten dessert. The whole yeah. week is thrown out the window. I yeah. might as well just start next week again. Yeah. And here we are again on this yo-yo yeah. mentality of on and off and on yeah. and off. So this is where the fourth pillar comes into play and that's flourish. So assess, reset, nourish, and flourish. Mm -hmm. And in the flourish pillar, the last pillar of my program, this is really when we say, all right, let's take all the data that we've collected from the last three months and really create this lifestyle that lasts. So, you know, we do a lot of mindset work. We do, you know, this is where my psychology roots come into play. We really dig deep into the beliefs that we are operating on, you know, the, our ecology, our identity that we picked up in the first seven years of life. And these their subconscious beliefs. So this is beyond our logical brain, right? This is deeply seated. I believe that working hard is what I have to do in order to make money or in order to be successful in anything that I'm doing. It has to be this hard, hard work, 
right? So, yeah. okay, the belief is I have to work really hard in order to be successful. Where did that come from? Oh, yeah. well, my parents worked really hard their entire lives. Mm -hmm. Amazing. What good values did you pick up from that? Oh, well, actually, you know, I, do, I did pick up a good work ethic. Awesome. Does that still resonate with you? Or does the belief that in order to be successful, you have to work really hard, mm -hmm. does that align with who you are and who you're actually becoming as an mm -hmm. adult who's now forming his or her own opinions? Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of this work in the flourish uh, section, in the okay. flourish pillar, where then we say, okay, let's really dig deep and then move forward from this empowered place where I am never having to quote unquote, start all over again, because yeah. I've now created this foundation, right? Mm -hmm. We're not, you can't build a house on sand. You have to have a strong foundation mm -hmm. and then move forward from there, from this empowered place and say, man, this is actually what I believe. Yeah. And, and, you know, without that self-reflection, it can be really challenging. And without mm -hmm. someone holding that mirror up to you and saying, oh, I, I hear you saying this, what are your thoughts about this? You know, that having that curious and safe dialogue with a coach mm -hmm. or a therapist or a mentor can be really, really helpful and mm -hmm. can actually expedite the process of healing mm -hmm. very quickly, mm -hmm. which of course, it takes a, a financial and an emotional and an energetic commitment. Yeah. But the reward is always tenfold, minimum 100%. tenfold. And, and I love that you integrated like the gut. So you integrated like studying the gut and really healing the gut. And then you went into the psychology part of things. I found it like, I was like, at first, like, how are they related? But then you talked yes. more about the mindset. And I, and I love that you slowly got to that point. So going back to the first step, what is the, the GI test? Like, what is that? Is, like, is, is it a yeah. sample, blood work? What is that? Yeah, no. So it's actually a stool sample. It's a super easy at-home test. Okay. So the, uh, the physician will order it from her office. It'll get mm -hmm. mailed directly to your home. Mm -hmm. you, it has a whole kit. Mm -hmm. So you're going to set the kit up in your toilet, yeah. have a bowel movement, and then you take a sample of it and you put it in a little mm -hmm. vial. Mm -hmm. then, the, then I believe you freeze the vial and you send it back overnight shipping back mm -hmm. to the company and the shipping is already included. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's utilizing, it gives us the ability to really see a stool sample is one of the most fascinating, you know, examples of what's actually happening inside of us. I mean, yeah. that thing just traveled through, you know, whatever's coming out is going to give us a really good idea of what's mm -hmm. happening, mm -hmm. it, you know, in the environment of our rainforest, mm -hmm. of our gut. Again, what bacteria are present? What bacteria are not present? Mm -hmm. What are overgrown? Are there parasites or viruses that are causing issues or dysbiosis? Mm -hmm. You know, where are we a little bit out of balance? Mm -hmm. And it's it's fascinating because I think it's it's very confusing to think, oh, what test do I need? I mean, this is just <laughs> poop is essentially liquid gold, you know what I mean? Or hopefully yeah. it's not liquid. Maybe it's solid gold. But yeah. as far as data for the internal environment of our gut, now some are, again, are better quality than others and they're mm -hmm. all based on algorithms. Mm -hmm. So the one that I specifically have chosen, again, you have to go through a physician to order it because mm -hmm. it uses the top AI technology in order to really give us a comprehensive data um, feed of what's happening in there. And then obviously the physician and I will sit down and be able to review these collectively together and she can mm -hmm. give a recommended protocol based on that. Mm -hmm. But I love what you said, Ida, about the uh, physical healing and the mindset work. And this is where the gut brain access really comes into play. And what I think mm -hmm. most people don't realize is that, I mean, if you look physiologically at our GI tract, mm -hmm. it's this squirrely gray matter. Yeah. It actually looks like our brain. <laughs> and what studies have yeah. shown recently is that the cells that actually form our brain in the womb are multiplied from the same identical cells that actually form our gut. So there, so yeah. it's the, it's the same cells that actually form both our brain and our gut. And that axis you know, through our spine, through our central nervous system are directly connected. So they're also showing that over 97% of serotonin is produced in our GI tract, yeah. which is really interesting when we look at studies for anxiety and depression yeah. and, um, you know, pharmaceutical medications that treat anxiety and depression, which by the way, I need to disclaim here, bless that medicine. If you are on medication that's helping you get out of bed and function throughout your day, yeah. bless that medicine. 
And if you're curious about ways to maybe see different opportunities and ways to heal, I would highly recommend assessing your gut microbiome because mm -hmm. those serotonin reuptake inhibitors are simply inhibiting the serotonin that's circulating in your body from getting reabsorbed. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be if instead of just preventing the reabsorption of the little amount of serotonin that in your body, and rather that, how cool it, would it be to be actually able to produce more, yeah. produce more serotonin and dopamine yeah. and GABA and all these feel good um, feelings in our body, right? All of these hormones that we need to feel good. And I always like to say, you know, I, I can't do the mindset work again if I'm waking up in pain every day. Yeah. So this is where I like to start. And this kind of comes from my teachings. I'm also a yoga teacher, right? We start in the physical. We start with the asana. You know, when you think of yoga, if you've never practiced yoga, you think, oh, people doing weird shapes. Yeah. That's called asana. And the asana is just one of an eightfold path. There's actually eight paths to yoga. Mm -hmm. The physical shapes is only one path. Mm -hmm. But you have to start there mm -hmm. in order to get to the more subtle journey and experience of the spiritual awakening that yoga can be. And it's the same thing with physically healing. If we yeah. start with the visceral, where we can taste, touch, smell, see, and hear, where we actually have measurable results, where now I'm not relying on that third cup of coffee by 10 a.m. to yeah. get me through the day, or I'm, I, I can actually go out and eat food on date night and not worry about producing gas that's embarrassing, yeah. or I can actually get in front of that boardroom and present. Well, now yeah. it's probably over Zoom, but even so, I can get in front of that Zoom meeting feeling radiant from the inside out rather than putting another layer of makeup on and chugging another espresso, yeah. right? This yeah. true radiance. And, and I always say, especially for the high performing people in our lives, we get really lost and confused on this journey because again, we think it's about doing more. Yeah. And in reality, it's typically about being more of that person that you want to be mm -hmm. and doing less of the things that are causing frustration and stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And um, like you said, I always talk about being and I, I, I don't think you understand it unless you feel it and you experience the beingness. Yes. Um, so I love that. But I have a question. So yes. now let's say you did the GI test, the results were okay. Then yeah. Why are you still having issues? What, what, is really, mm. what is really the problem there? If your gut is showing that everything within you is okay. Mm. Great question, because this, I think, is also very confusing in typical. And again, I'm going to say Western medicine, not because it's a bad thing, but just yeah. Western medicine came from the war zone, right? It is meant to heal traumatic situation. If I have a broken bone or a wound, or, you know, if I'm bleeding after giving birth, I, I don't want to be anywhere other than in the top medical facilities yeah. that we have access to now, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's truly miracles what Western medicine has done. When it comes to chronic illness and chronic disease, it, it's a different mentality. It's a different mindset. And unfortunately, Western medicine still approaches chronic dis yeah. disease, disease like it is a trauma. So it's put a Band-Aid on it and walk away, right? Yeah. Take these supplements, take these medications and suppress what's actually going on. So to answer your specific question, if there's no major dysbiosis in the gut, but you're still feeling off... Mm -hmm. Typically, there is inflammation somewhere. So mm -hmm. what's happening is, again, we are really affected by our environments. Yeah. So everything from heavy metals to pesticides to chemicals in processed foods can build up over time. Okay. This is why we have to really focus on our detox pathways, our natural detox pathways, uh -huh. our liver, our skin, our lymph nodes, our sweat, our breath, and our GI tract mm -hmm. are all, uh, and our hair and nails. These, mm -hmm. we are, these are all um, detox pathways. So if we are not sweating every day, if we are not pooping every day, if we are not... Um, turning over our skin and our lymph cells every day via something like dry skin brushing, mm -hmm. then the detox pathways get blocked 
And then our organs get overburdened. For example, our liver is a beautiful example. Our kidneys are beautiful examples of natural detox pathways in our body. We don't have to do any extreme cleanse or detox in order to detox our body. Mm -hmm. I land in that foundation that what we do have to do is provide, again, the opportunity and the environment to let our body do what it does best. And sometimes it gets a little sluggish. If you've ever heard of sluggish liver, right? Fatty liver, early yeah. signs of fatty liver, yeah. right? These are all signs that the body is burdened with something, our environment. Mm. It's, no, um, it's no surprise that we live in an environment that is not optimal to our well being, yeah. right? Everything from constantly burdened by noise, distraction, and technology yeah. to cooking our food in highly processed oils and pots and pans that are made of toxic metals to, you know, plastics and microplastics that are in our beverages and our water that we're drinking. Yeah. So all of these things add up. And again, this is not me trying to dogmatize big whatever. That's a separate conversation, mm -hmm. right? When we look yeah. at the big industries, that's not mm -hmm. what I'm trying to hear. And that's not what I'm here to do. However, there is validity to saying that, you know, if I'm eating the same foods every single day and they're always coming out of a box or a container and they're not coming from the ground, then those processed things, those food dyes, those preservatives Yes, my body will eliminate them. Yeah. And maybe in small doses, they're not toxic. But over time, if that's the only thing that I'm eating yeah. and my detox pathways are not really amped up, there's going to be inflammation in my body. Of mm -hmm. course there is. Mm -hmm. And the gut is going to say, I don't know what to do with this red 40 and this yellow 30. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with these preservatives because now I have leaky gut. Yeah. So what leaky gut is... All of the cells, if you can picture, if you've ever seen like a slide, you just mm -hmm. get on Google and picture a slide of a skin cell, mm -hmm. right? Or like a flab of skin, right? Mm -hmm. of, of course, and now I'm picturing like biology 101 classes that I took, <laughs> yeah. right? You can picture all the cells standing up in a row like soldiers, right? This is your epithelial cells on the yeah. outside of your, of your dermis, right? Your skin, or if you can imagine your arm, like your, your large intestines or small mm -hmm. intestines. On the very outside of that is the same thing. It's this line of cells. And if those cells are not super tight, right? If those little soldiers are not elbow to elbow, yeah. what happens is as the intestines moves, right? It moves our food through a process of, um, well, there's the migrating motor complex. And then, you know, it, <laughs> there's different things that move our food through our GI yeah. tract, as these, this muscle moves, those cells will actually separate a little bit. Yeah. Just enough for that food that's inside to leak out. Yeah. So now that food that's inside my GI tract, because there's inflammation, mm -hmm. those cells are separating as it's trying to move. It's struggling to move the food through, mm -hmm. right? Because movement is something, again, that we focus on. It's a, it's a detox pathway. The food is going to seep through the outside of that exterior lining of our GI tract, of our intestines, and seep into our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have issues like autoimmune disease. If I have foreign objects in my bloodstream, what is my immune system going to do? Yeah. It's going to say, we got to fight. Right? If I get a, a splinter stuck in my arm, yeah. if I don't remove it, it's going to, it's, it's all the white blood cells are going to go there and it's going to get infected. That, an yeah. infection, that, you know, that is your immune system doing exactly what it is meant to do. The problem is that it's confused because now these foreign bodies, this food and these endotoxins are in your bloodstream. Yeah where they're supposed to be. Food is supposed to stay inside your GI tract and we're supposed to absorb the nutrients. Uh -huh. So to answer your question, <laughs> again, if the GI map test doesn't say that there's parasites or some crazy overgrowth, mm -hmm. we really then need to just look at what are the levels of, what are the things in your life that are causing inflammation? Mm -hmm. What are your stress levels? What is your chemical toxic load? What are the heavy metals that you are exposed to? And how can we create integrity again in your GI tract. And we do that by decreasing stress. 
And that answers your question of the being versus the doing. And what yeah. I mean by that is, I'll give you a specific example for it to be relevant. If the doing, if I'm eating a salad, that's my doing. I'm yeah. doing this action right now. I'm eating a salad. Yeah. And in my brain, a salad is a dogmatically healthy food, right? Yeah. We all, right. it's from the ground. So we think that it's healthy for us. For yeah. sure. Some people, they struggle to break down raw foods. So it might not be healthy. So that's yeah. just a disclaimer. If who I am being while I am eating that salad is stressed out, on the go, multitasking, yeah. and you know, time warping into the future and worrying about something in the future or reminiscing on, you know, ruminating on something that happened in the past. If who I am being is stress AF, yeah. <laughs> then the doing, right, yeah. the eating the salad will be in vain because my stomach will not absorb those nutrients and eliminate the toxins. It just won't work because who I'm being is stressed out. Now I'm landing in that central nervous response of fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Guess what the first thing is that shuts down in the fight or flight response? Digestive system. Digestive system. It's, if I'm running from a tiger, I don't yeah. need to worry about digesting yeah. my food. Yeah. And, and the brain perceived, perceived stress and real stress are perceived the same yeah. way. Our body reacts to survive, whether mm -hmm. we imagine a tiger chasing us or if a tiger is actually chasing us. So mm -hmm. this is a very long answer to that mm -hmm. question, but it's really important because um, being relentless in that pursuit of finding answers and really mm -hmm. being willing to assess where mm -hmm. we are uh, stressed and bogged down and burdened in our lives and how that is landing as dis-ease, disease mm -hmm. in our body and inflammation. This is how we, again, we have to hit reset. That's again, pillar two of my program. So this mm -hmm. is where we eliminate those inflammatory flu foods. We eliminate caffeine and alcohol. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds scary, but don't yeah. worry. It's, yeah. it's I have lots of quote unquote tips and tricks to make yeah. the whole process very uh, fun and nurturing, right? Yeah. We have to create an environment that is actually supportive of healing. We have mm -hmm. to hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. So it does, it does take mm -hmm. effort, mm -hmm. but again, it is so worth it on the other side because then you realize, wow, I don't have to live in this pain and suffering anymore. I actually can live in this nourishing place where I'm not numbing out from my life anymore. Yeah. I've actually created a life of self-care that I no longer have to numb out from. Yeah. That's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And could it be possible that you could be eating the healthiest food and you're just for, for like, you're eating what is supposed to be defined as healthy and yet still have um, inflammation in the gut or still have a le leaky gut. Is that even possible? Yes. So that again, kind of brings it back to who you are being. So if you're doing all the things, if you're exercising, uh, you know, if you're doing militant exercises, and in fact, this is most of my clients would land on this frame. I, I, most of my clients, when they come to me, they said, Oh, I'm, I'm pretty healthy. I exercise yeah. and I eat really healthy. Yeah. Amazing. You've got a great starting point. But how are you feeling? Oh, well, I feel exhausted and tired and my periods yeah. are really painful and I am chronically constipated and I get these migraines yeah. and I have these rashes on my skin. Hmm. This is where we have to assess if who I'm being while I'm exercising is self-loathing and super stressed out and I'm yeah. telling myself I have to lose weight in order to be worthy of safety, love, and acceptance, yeah. do you think my body will respond to that exercise in a healthy way and will actually uh -huh. release this, the weight or do you yeah. think it will actually hold on to the weight and, yeah. and build in a way that does it doesn't make sense so yeah. you know for anyone listening to this saying i'm i'm exercising all the time and i'm eating right but i'm not losing weight and i'm not yeah. feeling better yeah we highly encourage you to call me because something yeah. isn't aligning maybe there is dysbiosis in the gut maybe it's just who you're being is super stressed out all the time yeah. and it's also important to remember Ada, that exercise is meant to put us into a stressed state there is a word for it. I'm forgetting it. My naturopathic doctor is going to laugh when she listens to this. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. <laughs> the yeah. state that our body goes into when we exercise is a fight or flight response state. It's a cardiovascular strengthening state. It's a muscle strengthening state. But we are in a central nervous response of fight or flight. Yeah. We cannot live there because, listen, the body doesn't heal yeah. in a stressed state. It makes no sense. The body prioritizes naturally healing, naturally detoxing when we're sleeping. 
when we are rested and digesting, right? This is the parasympathetic nervous response. Mm. This is why if you talk to any trainer, they'll say you have to have rest days. Yeah. And then incorporate it in. Yeah. Because without those rest days in between, you're just pushing. Mm -hmm. So if you are pushing and fighting for health, but you're still feeling sick, Mm-hmm. Call me because yeah. we gotta we gotta reassess what's happening here. Awesome. <laughs> the the inflammation is probably coming from some somewhere else in life. So, what advice do you have for people to function from a place of being? Mm. I love this question. And if you're listening to this and you're still thinking, like, what the heck does that even mean? Yeah. A good a good self reflective question is just simply, how do I feel right now? Mm-hmm. That's how, that's how you can start to assess your state of being. Mm -hmm. Who am I being right now? Mm -hmm. Do I feel stressed? And and remember, most of us are very highly functioning go-getters. Yeah. And many of us will actually even stand and, oh, well, that stress is good for me. I operate well on that stress. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And how are your poops every day? (laughs) Oh, they're great. I go poop every day. All right. How do you sleep at night? Oh, yeah, it's a little yeah. tough to wind down at night. Yeah. All right. So to, to answer the specific question, you know, what I always offer is just take a moment. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be this really fancy thing. It doesn't have to be a 30 minute sit down on your meditation mat and ohm and meditate, right? <laughs> yeah. It can literally be just a moment where we stop and ask ourselves, how am I feeling and who am I being right now? And One of the other foundations that I operate from is the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So if I'm scrolling on social media, that's the doing. Who in my being while I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. I'm a little stressed out. I'm starting to compare and despair. I'm numbing out from the responsibilities that I have to deal with, you know, and, and I say this again with there's, there's. There's a time and place to intentionally numb out. And I'll give a specific example Mm -hmm. of that that can be helpful. If, say, for example, I'm experiencing grief. Mm. Say say something happened and I just went through a traumatic experience or I lost somebody that I love and I'm experiencing grief. Mm -hmm. And I have to give a presentation in 10 minutes. But all of a sudden I start to feel a wave of grief coming Mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. This is when it would be an appropriate time to hop on Instagram and scroll cat videos like I do. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I just, I need something lighthearted and funny and cute to (laughs) be able to categorize and come back to what I have to get done in this moment. Mm -hmm. Knowing that my personal practice, as soon as I get this to do done, I'm going to then unplug and carve out space for that wave of grief to come. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to continue to numb out from it. I'm Mm -hmm. going to allow it to come. I'm going to have a good cry in the shower. I'm going to go unplug and walk the beach. I'm going to get outside and roll in the snow. I'm going to go be present with my children without technology around, right? I'm going to let that grief be there. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, that numbing out is appropriate, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. there's, there's, and this is again, who am I being? In that moment, I know all right, grief, I feel you coming. I need to get this done. So I need to categorize you. So I'm going to take five minutes mindfully numb out so I can take a deep breath and do what I need to do to get done. So I can perform for the day, Mm -hmm. knowing that after this, I'm going to carve out the time and space to let that wave come. Mm -hmm. So my best tip to shift into the being is to constantly become Mm self-aware. How am I feeling right now? Am yeah. I feeling am I feeling out of body? Am I feeling this compare and despair? Am I feeling not good enough? Am I feeling like I have to do more? Mm-hmm. This is this is a good sign that you might be stuck. Is yeah. this relentless like grasping? I got to be doing more. I got to be yeah. keeping busy. I have to stay plugged in. If you're really stuck in that moment, mm-hmm. it's the most counterintuitive thing do less. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just for three deep breaths, even if it's just for 30 seconds, stop, put the phone down, put the computer down, take the headphones out, look out the window, look at something you love, like just take your eyes away for a minute and 
breathe deeply and assess your internal environment. Yeah. From that place, you will be able to now make a more empowered choice of what to do next. Mm -hmm. So now the doing is coming from a place of being Mm -hmm. intentional Mm -hmm. rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Buddha or Gandhi or someone who said this, but the, the ego believes that I will be at peace once everything falls into place, right? So once I do all the things, then I will be at peace. But the spirit knows everything will fall into place once I am at peace. Yeah, 100%. The the being has to come first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I love that. And to to add to that part as well, too, I think sometimes, like you said, sometimes it's the being aware of how you're feeling is key, but sometimes as well is your belief system about the food that you're eating. So you could be eating the healthiest food possible and yet still believe that it's not good enough. And then, yes. and then you gain weight. I'm like, then how, how are you gaining weight and you're eating as purely and as healthy as possible? Um, yes. And if you ask someone else, they look at you and, and they tell you that, you know what, you're doing really well. Like you eat really clean, but in your perspective, let's say in my perspective, I could do much better. I could eat, uh, let's, let's say, because you learn about mm. different diets and you learn about different things that are bad for your gut. And now you have so many different theories and you're trying everything out. So even if you try one, you're still not good enough because there are hundred other ones that you need to work on. So I yes. think I just posted a story about this yesterday on Instagram. So you can come follow me on Instagram at the Chelsea Haynes. And I, I just posted about this yesterday because again, it's that it's the belief that nothing is ever good enough. Yeah. That's it's the belief. belief yeah. yeah. It's the belief that somebody else out there in the world is an expert on my body yeah. and I have yeah. lost all sovereignty And this is where I would ask you and anyone listening to this to really allow yourself to question, question everything. Mm. Just be a critical thinker. Just question everything. Take, take all the information in, Mm -hmm. chew it up, (laughs) digest it, absorb the lessons and eliminate what doesn't serve you. Right. Again, all puns intended. Yeah. Yeah. You are the expert of your own body. Yeah. I think Period. that's a key. Yeah. I think that's key. Like we just believe that someone else knows us more than we do. And it's just yes. the moment that we understand that like we have everything that we need to know about ourselves within us. I mean, that's, I think, I feel like it's key to healing, but it takes yes. time and effort and energy and it's not easy as it sounds. No, it <laughs> takes a lot of unlearning and remember yes, unlearning yeah. can be very scary. So yeah. if now all of a sudden I'm, 40 years old and I'm asking, asking myself to question everything that I believe to be true. Yeah. The subconscious brain is going to say, whoa, yeah. hold on, but we survived for 40 years. So like, yeah. right, there's, there's something there. Yeah. yeah, we survived, but are we thriving? Are we feeling good or are we just grinding and hustling mm-hmm. and stressed mm-hmm. out, you know? Mm-hmm. If, if you desire something different, if you desire to be able to breathe easy, if you desire to sleep deeply, if you desire yeah. what I call the, the one wipe swipe poops yeah. that just don't hurt and they yeah. happen every day like clockwork, you know, if, if, if you desire to eliminate those migraines or those autoimmune uh, symptoms, and remember, mm-hmm. symptoms are just messages from your body. And this is, yeah. this is again, redirecting it back to You are, and anyone listening to this and beyond, we are all sovereign beings. So what that means is we know what is best for us, but we live in a very noisy world that's trying to convince us otherwise. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So please, you know, I encourage you, if, if you're watching the news or you're watching streams or you're scrolling again, like, and you're starting to feel yucky inside, that's a sign to all right, I can't consume any more of this. It's the same thing if I'm, whatever it is I'm eating in front of me, I get to that point where, oh, if I eat another bite, I'm going to feel sick. Yeah. That's when I have to stop and, and allow myself just to breathe and say, okay, what is my higher self saying? What is my spirit trying to whisper to me? What are these signs and symptoms in my body trying to tell me? Because guess what? 
my body doesn't have words, just like my stomach doesn't have teeth, right? Mm -hmm. Digestion starts in the mouth. My body doesn't have words, but what it does have is white blood cells and, you know, skin cells and uh, reactions. Mm -hmm. There's there's pain receptors for a reason. The pain is there to show you that there's something causing that pain. That's why we feel pain. If I put Mm -hmm. my hand on a hot plate, I have to pull away from Mm -hmm. the hot plate. But I wouldn't know that if I didn't feel the pain. And there's actually a people out there that don't have pain receptors. And that would be a very scary world because without that feedback, we would, we would be in, it'd be a very scary world (laughs) without pain, without pain receptors and feedback. So I have a question for that. Sometimes um, we lose the sense of what does it mean to be full or what does it mean to be hungry? So whenever you, I heard you, like you, you mentioned earlier that, um, I feel that I'm full, but I need to stop. But then you, you can't stop. You can't because mm. you're so used to reaching a point of like, you can't breathe anymore. And that's when you stop. So it becomes yeah. challenging to stop. So what advice do you have for that? Great question. And this is actually uh, something that I work on with my clients yeah. intimately. We create what's called a hunger and a fullness scale. Mm. And this is, again, the very, very, very basics. It's one of the first things we do in the assessment Mm-hmm. pillar of mm-hmm. my program because we have to assess the signs of our body our own unique body i can't say oh you know eat seven bites of this and not 10 that doesn't work right for everyone because 10 bites might be you know we we have to look at your unique body and you'd be shocked to realize how many of us don't even know that first sign that our body is starting to be hungry and it's very subtle a few common things that i hear are just the thought oh i have a thought about food yeah perfect that might be the first sign that you're starting to get hungry what's the second sign Hmm. i start to get this empty feeling in my belly or the back of my throat amazing. So we're moving down on the hunger scale. What's the third sign that now you're starting to get closer and closer to hangry? We never want to get hangry, right? Where we're just elbows out, move out of my way. (laughs) If I don't eat now, I'm going to kill someone or pass out. We never want to get there because what happens once we get there, that's when we inhale our food and then we overeat. Yeah. So what's, you know, what's the third sign of hunger? Oh, well, I start to get a headache. Mm Mm-hmm. Bing, bing, bing. For you know, for me and my body, I know once I get to a headache, what happens next? Ooh, that's when I start to get nauseous, and then as soon as I'm nauseous, forget about it. That's I've gone too far into hunger Mm. for my body personally. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this is an example of some common things that I hear of that hunger scale. So again, start to become very acutely aware of those signs of hunger, and it's the same thing with fullness. Mm -hmm. So. A few tips that I can offer in order to start becoming aware of when your body is full is slow down, sister, right? The brain, I'm not kidding. This is a this is a studied, this is a studied thing. The brain needs 20 minutes, 20 minutes to realize that we have food in our stomach. Mm. And maybe you've noticed this if you go out to dinner with a lot of people and you're loving the conversation. You're spending a lot of time conversing and you're taking a few bites, but you're really involved in the conversation. By the end of the meal, you think, wow, I didn't even eat that much, but I'm really full. Yeah. You've given yourself the time to let your brain catch up with your belly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've given yourself the time to let those signals travel up the gut brain access and say, all right, it's been 20 minutes. We're good. Now, that doesn't mean If you have one bite, 20 minutes later, you'll be full. But what I mean is you can use that as a guide. The typical time that we eat our food, if we sit down to eat, is less than three minutes. And the sandwich is gone, right? We just inhale. Yeah. So how do we actually slow down? Yeah. It sounds so simple, but the best tip I can give on this journey is chew your food. Mm. Again, the stomach doesn't have teeth. Digestion yeah. starts in the mouth. We have saliva and enzymes and teeth. These are tools for yeah. a reason. Yeah. So every single bite, you want to chew to applesauce consistency. And I know, I, I say this because I, if I'm being someone who's stressed out and watching TV and thinking about my meetings later and I'm eating, I'm swallowing 
whole, whole grains of rice. Yeah. Right. How do you think my stomach is going to break down that whole grain of rice? It's going to be a lot harder than if I were to chew that grain of rice to mush Mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. I'm setting myself up for digestive success Mm -hmm. because then if I swallow mush, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's why smoothies are kind of such a praised thing in the health and wellness world. And that's because it's, it already looks, the food is already broken up for you, Uh but it has those nutrient density uh, elements that we need. Hopefully if you're smoothies that are good for your gut, which include protein, fat, and fiber. Uh If you're just having fruit smoothies, you're probably going a sugar roller coaster and not feel good. (laughs) So there's obviously nutritional elements to this, Mm -hmm. but the basics of it, no matter what you're eating, just chew your food to applesauce consistency Mm -hmm. and let that be a slow process. So Mm -hmm. what that means is if I'm chewing and I'm already plating up and I got my food hovering outside my mouth and I swallow and I'm yeah, work down, chew, breathe through your nose, yeah. swallow, yeah. and then fork up and yeah. do it again. Yeah. So it's, it's about eating with reverence and it's about eating with mind. And it's about eating with gratitude and, and again, with your visceral senses. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? Not only just what does it taste like, what does it Mm -hmm. smell like? What does it feel like? Eat with your fingers. You know, what Mm -hmm. does it feel like? What are the colors that are appeasing to my eyes? What Mm -hmm. are the textures? What does it sound like when I'm cooking it? You know, those snap crack pops. Let it be a really big um, visceral, almost sacred experience of yeah. eating. Yeah. Amazing. And so what advice do you have for sleep? Cause you said sleep is key. So what is like one advice that you have for sleep? Yes. Sleep. Listen, if we are not sleeping, but sleep has to be one of the first things that we assess. It's one of the first things that we look at in pillar one. Mm-hmm. Our sleep. If, again, if we're not sleeping, we're not healing, we're not digesting, we're yeah. not we're not regenerating. We're not, we're not naturally detoxing, period. Uh-huh. Um, a tip for sleep. Uh, it's, the first thing that comes to mind is the technology. Yeah. You know, we're not meant to be looking at blue light once the sun goes down, right? The sun is up for a reason. That is when we are meant to be absorbing light. Mm-hmm. Once the sun goes down, we're not meant to be looking at harsh, bright light. So mm-hmm. blue light, and, and for anyone who's on the blue light blocker glasses, actually yeah. on my phone, I have my screen protector yeah. is blue light and weird. It actually looks blue. Um, the blue light is going to hit your retina and it's going to inhibit melatonin production. Yeah. Yeah. Melatonin is the natural hormone that we need to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. So the best tip I can give, and to make it doable, and and when we work together, all of our action steps are doable and manageable. So Mm -hmm. I would never say, oh, unplug at sunset in the middle of winter when the sunset's at 4 p.m. Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Unplug 30 minutes earlier than you normally would. And Mm -hmm. maybe when you get in bed, create your bedroom to be a no screen zone. I know my Mm -hmm. husband and I, we don't have a TV in our bedroom. We never Mm -hmm. will. Uh, telephones go on airplane mode at night and get plugged in over on the other side of the room. And we are in habits of reading before bed. Mm -hmm. Uh, That really works for us. If Mm -hmm. you're not a big reader, um, Mm -hmm. I would highly encourage you to maybe listen to audio tapes so you can download audio books or um, binaural frequencies or Selvegio, binaural beats or Selvegio frequencies. You can look up up on YouTube. Or um, there's apps out there like Calm or Insight Timer or even Spotify, playlists yeah. that are just all of these. You want your brain to switch. And forgive me, I'm not, I'm a gut expert, not a brain expert. I believe you want to switch your brain into a delta state, I believe. Okay. Could be, could be theta, theta or delta where we, I think, operate on alpha and beta. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But those beats, those frequencies, those sounds that vibrate through us, or everything is vibrating, everything is mm. moving on. Mm-hmm. We are again tapping into that vibration, and audio audio stimulation is a really good way to do this. You can actually train your brain to drop down into that those sleep states. Could mm-hmm. be theta, I'm not sure. Um, so it's sort of like this mind hack. 
Secondarily, use your breath. The breath is something we always have. And it's so, I know it's on repeat, but it's so underrated because mm-hmm. the people who actually utilize it are one, maybe one every three, right? Yeah. Every single human being, when you lay down in bed, just put your hands on your belly and actually breathe into your belly. So this is lower than, than chest breathing. This is diaphragmatic belly breathing. So as you inhale, your stomach mm-hmm. actually in- Plates like a balloon, which is mm-hmm. counterintuitive if you're used to chest breathing. Yeah. You know, chest breathing, you pull your belly button in and you breathe in your chest. Yeah. You do the opposite of that. So yeah. relax the chest and breathe into the belly. This is going to trigger the parasympathetic rest and digest mm-hmm. response. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden we are tapping into those yeah. different wavelengths, right? The brain axis, we're tapping into the gut axis with this belly breathing. And the gut-brain axis are now talking to each other to say, okay, we are no longer stressed out. We're no longer stimulated. It's now time to fall asleep. Mm. Last most important tip is, again, remember, your body knows what to do. Mm. You are a human being on this earth. No one ever taught you how to fall asleep. You and your body know exactly how to fall asleep. So if it's not happening... Again, let's assess if there's something physically happening in your gut to prevent that. But if sleep is not happening, assess your habits and your wind down routine. And sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and it's not that big of a deal. The anxiety that feeds the waking up in the middle of the night is what's even more detrimental. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, it's 3 a.m. and you're anxious about it and you can't fall back to sleep. I, my, and my, I'll leave this to my mom. My mom always taught me. She said, Chelsea, just rest. Lay there, breathe, and just rest. Know that, God willing, you wake up and have another day. If you're a little bit tired, that's okay. Because then at the end of the day, your body is going to crash and you're going to fall back into a nice deep sleep. Yeah. So, you know, if you live in your mind a lot and your head space yeah. is very loud and very confused and you're, you're a, a highly achieving person but you're you really try to overthink all your problems drop into your body drop into who you're being right and get into that Uh, these are some of the tools that can help you do that Mm -hmm. so the binaural beats or silvegio frequencies and your breath and then just becoming aware of the anxiety and allowing it to melt away oh my god this can go on forever like like i have to put an end to it So let me, let me just ask you, I usually have like a bunch of questions, but I mean, I'm just going to ask you one question. Um, so what is your definition of success? Ooh. And you know, what's so beautiful is that my definition of success is, it's all unique for all of us, isn't yeah. it? And I love yeah. it. It's part of the assessment phase of my program is, yeah. what is your definition? What, do, what would this want to look like? Yeah. So for me, what success has looked like is, mm being able to create a life of freedom. So what that means is I am uh, financially free. I live debt free. I am um, emotionally free to feel all of my feelings as they arise. I am physically free to lean into rest when I need to rest and lean into movement when my body feels energized. Uh, I am free in my time to be able to do what I love and create time for my passion. You know, it, well, luckily my life is passions and what I love all in the same, but I feel free to create and, and manipulate. And I say that with love, my time in a way that works for me, I'm not living on somebody else's time. So I guess uh, success is freedom for me. And, and that's what it has looked like for me. So would you, defi- would you say that you're successful now? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. And <laughs> do, do you think there would be another level of success at some other point? Yeah. Isn't there always? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. This is what I always say. Um, even on the journey to health, financial well-being, physical well-being, you know, health, wellness, love, and relationships, and spiritual connection. Right. It's there's always a next level. There's always something to work on. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I think really being grateful and honoring and just like what you said earlier, we can always get stuck in that. Oh, I have to do more Mm -hmm. celebrating what you are doing, Mm -hmm. honoring what you are doing, feeling grateful for what you are able to do right now. 
is what actually allows us to have more of that. So, you know, at every new level, there's a new devil. And if that means, you know, you're at a certain level of success and you want to up level from there, you, again, you got to start at the beginning, assess, reset, nourish, and flourish. Mm. It's just this sort of constant cycle. And yeah. this is why I have business coaches and physical trainers and therapists and health yeah. coaches. I have, I have a whole team of people supporting me because yeah. again, um, I've been able to create this life of financial freedom and mm-hmm. health freedom and success, but it wasn't without a lot of help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not meant to do life alone, 100%, right? <laughs> 100%. 100%. So again, I just want to say thank you so much, Chelsea, for joining me and adding so much value. Like I really felt you were so in it, like you were 100% giving in, giving in. So thank you so much for that. And I genuinely do believe people are going to get so much value from, from listening to this. So really, really thank you so much. Much. It's it's truly an honor. And then I, I, I'm glad that you can see the passion because yeah. this is definitely my life's work and I would love to connect with anybody who's listened to this you can find me on LinkedIn Chelsea Haynes on Instagram the Chelsea Haynes and my website is chelseahaynescoaching.com and you can actually connect with me directly through there as well and for everyone listening I hope you have an amazing awesome rest of your day